Welcome to CKLA Knowledge 3, Lesson 7, Little Red Riding Hood. Remember, people everywhere love listening to and telling stories. Some stories are similar that are told around the world, even though the stories originated in different places. So far, we have studied two sets of similar stories from different lands. One set of stories has main characters who have something in common about what happened to them in the end. The next set of stories were folk tales with the main characters that had something in common related to their size. Our purpose for listening today is to recall information about stories we hear we will identify the consequences of the main character's actions in a folktale, and we want to listen to understand the word cherished. Can you say cherished? The folktale you will hear today is Little Red Riding Hood. This story has been told all around the world for hundreds of years. The story was published long, long ago by two German brothers, Jacob and William Grimm. The country of Germany is a part of the continent of Europe. Listen carefully to find out what directions the little girl receives from her mother and what happens when she does not follow them. Once there was a sweet little girl who was loved by all who knew her, but most of all by her grandmother, who could not do enough for her. Once the grandmother sent the girl a cloak with a red velvet hood. The little girl was so pleased with the cloak that she cherished it and wore it every day. So she came to be known as Little Red Riding Hood. One day, her mother said to her, Little Red Riding Hood, your grandmother is feeling sick. I would like you to go and visit her. Take her some of the cakes we baked yesterday. They will do her good. Go quickly before it gets too warm. But remember to stay on the path and do not stop along the way. I will do just as you say, mother promised Little Red Riding Hood. Little Red Riding Hood started on her way. Her grandmother lived in a house in the woods, a half hour's walk from the village. Little Red Riding Hood had only just entered the woods when she came upon a wolf. The wolf longed to eat Little Red Riding Hood for lunch but Little Red Riding Hood did not know what a wicked animal he was, so she was not afraid of him. Good morning, Little Red Riding Hood, said the wolf. Good morning, wolf, she answered kindly. And where are you going so early? he asked. To my grandmother's house. And what's in your basket? Some cakes we baked yesterday. Grandmother is sick, and the cakes will make her feel better. And where does your grandmother live? In the woods, a short distance from here, in a cottage under three big oak trees, said Little Red Riding Hood. Mmm, said the wolf as he thought to himself. What a tasty morsel this little girl would be, but she's not big enough for a meal. I must find a way to eat her and her grandmother, too. The wolf walked alongside Little Red Riding Hood for a while. Then he said, Why, look at all the pretty flowers. Why don't you stop to rest and pick some of them? You're hurrying along as if you were late for school. Yet the birds are singing. And everything is so pleasant here in the woods. Little Red Riding Hood looked up and saw the sunlight dancing in the leaves of the trees. She saw the lovely flowers around her. 
and she thought, I am sure grandmother would be pleased if I took her a bunch of fresh flowers. Forgetting what she promised her mother, she left the path and went out of her way into the woods to pick some flowers. Each time she picked one, she saw others even prettier farther on, and so she strayed deeper and deeper into the woods. As for the wolf, he hurried straight to grandmother's cottage and knocked on the door. Who's there? said a little voice. It is I, Little Red Riding Hood, said the wolf, trying to sound like a little girl. Oh, lift the latch and let yourself in, dear. I am too weak to get out of bed. The wolf lifted the latch and swung open the door. Before Grandmother could realize what was happening, the wolf gobbled her up in one mouthful. Then the sly wolf dressed himself in her nightgown and nightcap. With a wicked grin, he got into the bed and pulled up the covers. It was quite the disguise. Meanwhile, Little Red Riding Hood had picked all the flowers she could carry and found her way back to the path. She walked on quickly until she came to Grandmother's house. She was surprised to find the door open, and as she stepped inside, she felt very strange. Oh dear, she said to herself, this morning I was so glad to be going to see my grandmother. Why do I feel so frightened now? She took a deep breath and called out, good morning, grandmother, but there was no answer. She went up to the bed. There she saw her grandmother, or so she thought. The wolf had pulled the covers up under his chin and pulled the nightcap down to his eyes. Little Red Riding Hood thought her grandmother looked very strange. Oh, Granny, she said, what big ears you have. The better to hear you with, my dear, said the wolf. Hmm, said Little Red Riding Hood. Granny must be very sick indeed, for her voice is much deeper than it used to be. And Granny, what big eyes you have. The better to <clears throat> see you with, my dear. And Grandmother, what big teeth you have. The better to eat you cried the wolf as he sprang out of bed and swallowed Little Red Riding Hood in one big gulp. After his meal, the wolf was feeling stuffed. He laid down on the bed and went to sleep and began to snore very loudly. A hunter who was passing by the cottage heard the snoring. My, he thought, the old woman sounds terrible. I'd better look inside and check on her. The hunter walked inside and saw the wolf. He instantly noticed the wolf's big belly and realized that the wolf had eaten the old woman. He knew he had to set her free. The hunter set them free and out jumped Little Red Riding Hood and Granny. Oh, I'm so grateful you saved us said Little Red Riding Hood. Granny, too, thanked the hunter for his kindness. When the wolf woke up, he was so shocked to see all of the people standing before him that he ran away, never to be seen again. Little Red Riding Hood sat down with her grandmother and the hunter, and together they ate the cakes Little Red Riding Hood had brought. And Little Red Riding Hood said to herself, after this, I shall always do as my mother tells me, and I shall never leave the path again, not even to pick pretty flowers. Think about the characters in our story. Where did our story take place? What happened in the beginning or the middle, the end of our story? 
Oh, and what was the conflict? The oh no problem. I hope you enjoyed our story today. Thanks for learning with me.